Welcome to NetWeb TV. Today, we're out with Gareth Knight, the co-founder of Kindle. Thank you for inviting us. Cool, man. Thanks for um, having me. Gareth, you started a company called Kindle. Can you tell us a bit about it? Sure. Uh, Kindle was an online uh, social network for the family. Uh, the, the kind of the tagline was Facebook for the family. Um, it's an easy way to explain it. Uh, how long ago was it? When did you start it? We started it on, in April 2007. That's when we started working on it. It took about three months to close the deal with the angel investors before that. Okay, I understand you sold Kindle. Yeah. yeah okay. Um, okay, let me take a step back a bit. How many were you when you started? Um, well, I mean, the way it worked out is we had, I, I had a team of people in my company, Technovate. Yes. When we started work on Kindle, we had one guy and then I just gradually moved people onto the project. So we had one guy, then like the next week we had two guys, then a month later we had four guys, and then a month later we had uh, eight guys. And by the end of it, we had roughly 16 in our office in London, yes. and then at another 12 or 14 around the world working remotely. When you sell a company, do you sell the system completely, or do you somehow stay and manage it? How does that work? How does the whole transaction work well, or the negotiations? I mean, the thing is, when somebody acquires a company, they're generally acquiring it for the people. It's, it's generally not a case of the technology because yes. you know, you'd think that a larger company would have the resources to build the technology that they need. What they're actually looking for is, is you know, a product and or a group of people, smart people. So what happens is Google goes, goes around and buys small companies because they want to acquire smart people. Yes. Microsoft's been doing 100 acquisitions a year for the last 10 years. So, you know, that's what they're doing. They, they, they're getting people. And in our case, it was about acquiring people as well as acquiring a brand, a, a user base. A lot of the social media websites I've been to, you, you would use for free. Yeah. Was that the same procedure with Kindle? Yeah. The model was always that we were going to build something for free and we were going to offer products that were complementary um, to the offering and generate revenue from that. Was that the revenue you generated worth keeping the company? Uh, no. In, in a nutshell, yeah. Okay. It was, I mean, we sold it before that ever became uh, realized in a big way. Um, so in, in the beginning, it was always about creating a big enough audience to push products through. We, we grew pretty big in the first six months, enough to get enough attention and to get really good traffic. A lot of the social media websites I've been to, you would sign up for free. So how do you keep the company behind it running? How do you sustain yourselves? Well, we started it with seed funding. So um, we had a combination of angels and seed investors who gave us funding um, to grow the business to a point where um, we could either get Series A venture capital, so yes. Series A is like one and a half million plus, um, or we would sell it to a media company, yes. um, or we would sell it to a competitor. For a large company, how does a platform such as Kindle, such as Facebook, benefit them? Well, it's about acquiring users. Generally, I mean, you know, for example, you look at Facebook, yes. Facebook's not breaking even as far as I know. I mean, they've got 500 odd employees and they're still not breaking even. Um, but they are generating a huge amount of money from their advertising, but they're still not breaking even as a business. Yet they've got, I don't know what the numbers are now, 120 million odd users. So if a Microsoft or a Google or an Apple or a, I don't know, a, a Time Warner or whatever buys a Facebook, yes. um, they're going to be acquiring 120 million users. So then it becomes how do we push our existing content or, or, or you know, strategies for those users through that user demographic and generate revenue through that. What are you currently working on? Um, well, I'm, I'm kind of in MyHeritage at the moment, so we sold to MyHeritage. Yes. Um, and that's going okay. I think there's going to be some changes coming up soon. Um, and so I'll kind of be figuring out what's going to be next um, from there. And then I'm working on a conference for um, South Africa or Southern Africa called Tech for Africa. The idea is to bring guys who are doing really cool stuff, bring them out here um, and expose people to them, get them to ask questions, to find out why or you know, why, you, why you should be doing stuff, how you can do it, what the best practices are. Because um, I think that South Africans could be building world-class stuff for the global audience, but they don't seem to be doing it. And oh. I'm very concerned about that. For an emerging entrepreneur, who has recently just started, would you say there's a formula to how you guys started Kindle and eventually selling it? I do think that there's a couple of things which you have to do. Um, one of the things is delegation. You can't grow without delegating and without giving people responsibility. That for me is the number one thing. The number two thing is that you can't grow on your own. 
you have to have people to help you. Um, very few businesses um, grow entirely through one person. So you need to be prepared to give other people success and make them successful as well. And then you'll benefit from that too. So it's a kind of a, yes. you know, a win-win situation. Um, and the third thing I think is I know lots and lots of people who want to succeed in, in life and in business, but they don't set goals for themselves. You know, they just kind of amble along day by day and they try and see what happens. I believe strongly in setting very clear goals and aiming for them so that you know when you're achieving them and when you're not. But now if you're starting up on your own and there's just one or two people starting a company, yeah. you haven't got a team there. Yeah. Then Much you have to team. sell. <laughs> so it depends. I mean, if, you, if you're running something and you're trying to grow it organically, you're going to have to sell big time. And you have to get people um, involved in what you're thinking and you have to get them into your mind space and you've got to convince them that they should join you and be a part of what you're doing. So there's a big selling thing to do there. And that's why I say, like, if you're not passionate about what you're doing, you're never going to be able to sell something. So don't even start. Like, do something that you're passionate about, and then the people will follow. Thank you, Gareth. That was great. Thank you for joining us on NetWeb TV.